Welcome to the To Help With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, And this season isn't actually a season because I'm busy working on a book. So what we will have is a few episodes when there's something important to talk about related to MTHFR that hasn't come up in other seasons. I can't wait to get started. This week, let's talk about methylation adaptogens. So this isn't a subject we've talked a lot about before, but I'm guessing you've heard the word adaptogens, and it's usually talked about in terms of adrenal health. So for the adrenals, an adaptogen is usually an herb that helps to balance your adrenal situation, right? If you have too much stress hormone, it helps to reduce it. If you have too little and can't respond to your stressors, then it helps to boost it. So it's this very pacifying, balancing factor. It's like magic. It turns out there are adaptogens in other realms as well. And I think one of the most crucial, one of the most long-term important could be methylation adaptogens. So let's talk about why this matters. We all know methylation is important for day-to-day -day functions, right? We know that, you know, there's so many processes that are happening in the background all the time in terms of making cellular energy, in terms of cell repair, reproduction that need methylation. But there's also a much bigger, much slower, much longer term process happening. And that is the methylation of your genetics. This is your epigenome, right? These are the ways that your diet, your lifestyle, your everyday life is affecting how your genes express. And technically, if you want to get really, really fancy with your words, this is called your thalome. New word of the day. So remember that a part of your epigenetics, which is the lifestyle factors that affect your genes, is methylating genes. So methylated genes are turned off and unmethylated genes are turned on. So methylation is one of the ways we regulate our genetic activity. This is how your body limits the activity of potentially harmful genes, like cancer-promoting genes, or maximizes the activity of potentially helpful genes like tumor suppressor genes. The issue with genetic methylation is that it's also affected by lots of things in your life. Nutritional status, early life socioeconomic status has been shown to affect your methylome. Childhood stressors, right? So people with the MTHFR mutation are shown to have longer term methylation changes because of childhood stressors. And once they're applied to your genes, these methylation tags, these little methyl groups, may not be reevaluated or removed for months, for years, even for your lifetime. A recent study demonstrated that gene methylation is actually heritable. So not only do you pass your DNA on to your children, like that raw DNA strand, you may also pass the methylated tags on to your children, which means that childhood trauma in your life may pass to your grandkids, right? It's amazing to think about. So these methylated tags are durable and long lasting, and that's great news if you've methylated the right genes. What if you haven't? The day-to-day -day things that we take to support methylation function, right? L5 methyl tetrahydrofolate or riboflavin or whatever we're taking to support does have potentially an effect on the way your genes are methylated, but the research is actually more definitive about the gene methylation effects of unique biological compounds called methylation adaptogens. And so when you picture an adaptogen, it can be helpful to picture a thermostat, right? If the room gets too hot, the thermostat clicks on and takes action to cool things down. If the room is too cold, the thermostat clicks on and takes action to warm things up, right? It's that moderating balancing factor. Methylation adaptogens do the same thing with your methylome. They balance the level of methylation 
on your DNA so that areas that are hypermethylated, that have too many methyl groups or too many segments turned off, can be reengaged. And areas that are hypomethylated, they're just running out of control, can be reined in. So I want to read a quote from a research study that was published in Biomolecules about cancer. Cancer cells have been shown to generally have a lower overall genome methylation rate than normal cells with a radically altered methylation pattern and the hypermethylation of normally unmethylated promoter CGIs or the global hypomethylation of DNA may be considered a hallmark of cancer, end quote. So basically what we're saying is that by altering the methylome, those cancer cells are allowed to just reproduce willy-nilly, breed out of control because there is no regulation. So the good news is your food is one of the best places to find methylation adaptogens. This is not a surprise, right? The universe, our world, is very beautifully designed. Things dovetail together. So if your body needs something, it's likely that you find it in places that we look anyway, in places that we are getting resources, like our food. So there's significant overlap in the foods that are considered to be, say, antioxidants or superfoods or anti-aging foods and foods that are methylation adaptogens. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's probably because these are really useful compounds. So including two to three servings of these foods every day can really help to boost your ability to adapt and normalize the methylation in your DNA, your methylone, which may have the most significant impact in terms of long-term health and disease risk of any action we can take with methylation. So here are some major categories of ingredients that show tremendous methylation adaptogen properties as verified by research. Caffeic acid from coffee, wine, apples, berries, cabbage, and other cruciferous veggies like broccoli and kale. Lycopene from tomatoes, watermelons, pink grapefruits, papayas, red bell peppers. Genistein from edamame, tofu, tempeh, roasted soybeans, miso paste, kidney beans, and chickpeas. Resveratrol from the skins of grapes, right? This is the one in red wine, especially dark red grapes. Red wine, blueberries, raspberries, mulberries, peanuts, cranberries, and cocoa. Hesperidin from citrus fruits like oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruit, especially that white part between the outer peel and the flesh of the fruit. Peppermint, is, and it's also found in onions. Vitamin D is actually a methylation adaptogen, and it's found in food sources like fatty fish, like salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines, also egg yolks, liver, and then fortified foods like fortified milk and milk substitutes. And methionine, which is found in high-protein foods like meat, fish, dairy, eggs, and nuts. And I just want to take an aside here and mention that on this list of methylation adaptogens are coffee, chocolate, red wine. Clearly, there is a god, and that god is benevolent. Thank you for that. So methylation adaptogens... Basically, these are our long-term disease prevention. Methylation day-to-day with things like methylfolate helps you to feel better in the moment and to regulate your mood and energy and even helps with longer-term issues like fertility. But in terms of big disease prevention, especially cancer, methylation adaptogens may actually be our most promising resource. That does not mean that your folate and B12 don't matter. Of course they do but it means they should be paired with a healthy diet that incorporates healthy proteins, lots of fruits and veggies, lots of these high bioflavonoid foods, like coffee, that chocolate. So we want to make sure that we're getting methylation adaptogens in our diet, plus a nice cup of coffee, coffee happily filled with caffeic acid, gets the day started right. So always remember your diet is a crucial piece of your MTHFR journey because we don't just want you to feel better day to day, we want your whole lifespan to be better. Thanks for being here.